You know, our next guest is very versatile. Not only is he keep the uh, community safe, he's got great advice for how and when to pass uh, if you're running late for something. And he also is the great uh, liaison between me and my producer, uh, Colin, uh, because the chief got my attention to tell me that Colin was trying to tell me that <laughs> the camera was not on me. Yeah, because we have the motion-sensitive cameras, uh, which follow you out of the room like a puppy. When you get a new But puppy. they don't follow you back. They don't follow you back for some reason. <laughs> they know that the food is out there, and when they come back in here, there's no food. Well, thank goodness there wasn't one in your kitchen because there, nobody was out there, and I was rooting through your fridge looking for a breakfast burrito. So. <laughs> oh, they, did, you get a, did you get a brookie? No, I did not. I, D- did you see them? I, I, I didn't want my fingerprints on your fridge, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, Magistrate Lemon yesterday was in, and she brought in brookies. Now, I'd never had one of these before. It's a, it's a brownie and a cookie. And at the center of it is a Reese's peanut butter cup. Mm. Now, if you have, if that, I think I'm in love. If that appeals to you. There's some in the there's some in the fridge left over from yesterday. I think we I think we just sparked an idea for my wife. I'll I'll bring that up with her later. I think That's, you did. Yeah. Add it to the repertoire. Her yeah. her stuff is amazing. Yeah, yeah. That, right? that might be interesting. Your wife ran for sheriff a couple years back, didn't she? She did. Twenty uh, twenty. She ran for sheriff. Twenty. Yeah. Twenty some. Twenty. You said twenty twenty. Yes. Yeah. I, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, is she going to be running for any offices no, in the near future? No, she's baking full time. Full time, she's baking now. So, put a brookie on the menu. <laughs> uh, that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, just a thought. I, I thinking. like that idea. Just a thought. Speaking of how the location y'all have now is great. Where she is, that's a perfect location. Yeah, that was a that was a huge endeavor on her part. You know, it's a it's very risky moving. Yep. You know, let everybody know what we're talking about here. Uh, Plug so, the company. So everything cheesecake. She owns everything yeah. cheesecake. She runs. She bakes it. Um, she has about six employees now. Seven employees. Huge kitchen. Great parking now. So she's really done well. Um, keeps extremely busy, selling out. Even though she can produce, you know three times more than she could before. Do you before. guys see any cheesecake? Uh, here in the, <laughs> yeah, where's the, the cheesecake, I, I, Chief? I, I don't see it any it uh, spilt in my car when I was chasing that guy to work today. <laughs> I was looking. <laughs> so he was trying to pass the time. Well spots. <laughs> so it's not my early. fault. I told you, leave early. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking high and low. I'm not seeing any cheese. Matt, you see any cheesecake? I, I, no, I can offhandedly I be a rat sometimes. Uh, Chief, I know you guys are hiring, uh, and uh, you're offering uh, pretty uh, eye-opening wages, too, to start uh, in the city of Martinsburg as well. Yeah, right now our starting is uh, about 56. Um, We have great pension, great benefits. Um, Right now we have a test coming up February 10th, actually next weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, It's at 9 o'clock. Encourage anyone to apply. Um, You know, I get asked occasionally, you know, why – one, why why is no one going into that field anymore? And I really can't answer that question other than the overall stigma mm-hmm. that police departments are getting now. But if you, my, my number one focus for law enforcement for our department is community orientation. Yes, you have to, you have to make sure you keep your, uh, your house clean. You have to clean house. Um, but prioritizing and having that focus of community involvement. When you have 300 civilians per square mile, comparatively speaking to the county that has 300 per square mile, you are, most municipalities, if they are not community oriented oriented or community based, they should be. Um, And that's that main focus. So if that's, if that sounds exciting to you and that's what you truly want to do and you want to help the community and be part of that community, then please apply, apply by Friday uh, this week Um, and uh, great pension, great benefits. We just moved to 12 hour days, um, which was, it's a democracy within the department. You know, we put it out for a vote. Hey, what, what kind of, uh, what are you guys looking for? What do you guys want to see in this department? What would what would make your uh, home life a lot easier as far as your work, your, you know, your work home mm-hmm. life? Um, so they're doing three, easier. three 12 hour days. Uh, they're doing three twelves and then an eight. Um, so they, so they kind of move the eights around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, my captain and my deputy chief are working on all that, but we just went to those in December um, and the guys seem to like it. If something happens in the next six months or so, and uh, they want to revert back to eights or something like that, then we can we can reevaluate it at that point. But um, right now they're happy. I think I think most people in the area are either doing tens or twelve hour shifts. Now, of course, that is four shifts. 
it's the price we pay. We're not losing coverage, but that is, that is, um, I did have to pull people from the detective bureau. I had to pull somebody out of the task force just to make sure that we have, because shifts are our number one priority in the department. Matt? You mentioned anyone can apply. Are there any restrictions like, you know, age or things like that? <laughs> you know, that's funny you say that because I've been keeping up with um, some bills going through legislature right now. And yeah. I saw up until uh, yesterday, there was a bill proposed that was um, the age of 18 to the age of 40 is 45 is normally what it is, but they raised it to 60. So this is being proposed. I'm still out, Bob. As, <laughs> as, out. Of, as of yesterday, they proposed it to have no limit. No back cap. in. You're back in. So you're yeah. back in. So you're back, back in. in. Can, I, can I say this? Is Joe Biden's America again? No, no limit on the age? Well, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of conflicted in, in the age thing, but I did bring this up to my son, and, I, and he's 16. He's, he's, a, he's a smart kid. And I was so just torn between, you know, um, having somebody come in and that's um, 58 years old and my, and he looks at me and he says, well, don't they still have to fulfill the same physical requirements as an 18 year old or a 19 year old? And I said, that is a good point. Now I know that those cognitive skills and, but that's what training's for. So I'm still kind of on the fence about this, you know, what I, I am very interested in what they're going to do. Um, but you don't have to hire somebody. Right. I mean, if they're, 50, if they're 58 and they fulfill the requirements, you can still take the 25 year old over the 58 year old. Yeah. To a point. The yeah, civil to a civil, point. civil <laughs> service jumps in and that's it gets a little bit more complicated than just that. Do you have to take the highest test scores? Is that the deal? Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, I've I've got an I'm, I'm 55. I have a number of friends who've retired in the last five years or so from law enforcement. And they would talk about how it just it was such a grind at the end because physically, the stuff they could do at 25, the stuff they could they, they could handle, by the time they were in their 50s, it was you know a lot of a lot of ibuprofen, and a lot of really struggling to get to get through the same. And obviously, I mean, as we get older, physically, we I mean, we may be able to do the stuff. We we certainly can't do it as long. Right. And law enforcement, as we know, is changing, especially over the past 20 years or so. You know that. Our number one focus is law enforcement. That's what we specialize in. However, the world is changing into the mental health crisis, the opiate addiction. And so, I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I'm, I'm, I don't know everything, but I'm not intimidated by those things that I don't know. So <clears throat> I need help. And so what I do is I start reaching out and, trying, and getting help. So we, we started off with uh, when I came in in July uh, or June, uh, we had um, we had just brought on a social worker, um, Noel, um, and since then in December uh, we have two more social workers. Now these these individuals they are a godsend they really are because this takes those resources that I'm putting I'm putting these patrol officers out and utilizing them for a mental health crisis, opiate addiction, you know, all these suicide uh, conversations with the suicidal individuals. Um, now, of course, there is a time and place for these social workers, but they have been a godsend. They really have, as of late, um, you know, tie, tying up our officers. They can they can break free and go do other things while someone is engaging with our social workers, and that's that's key to me. It really is. We're also um, pulling in a peer support specialist. I'm st we're still working out the details on this, but that'll go towards the lines of opiate addiction and mental health crisis as well. So we'll actually have four. That's great. And that all goes to community policing. I mean, has that, that's beautiful. To, yeah. Has to. Yeah. Are there specific requirements in the fact that it's it's police oriented and the work as far as those social workers and, and, and peer counselors and the, those positions? Uh, are you talking about safety for these uh, social workers? Well, or just like uh, as far as, you know, if, if I wanted to come and, and be a part of the force, I've got to go through certain training and certain requirements. Are, are they in those same no, situations? This, is, this is brought from an outside source. Okay. This is completely through whether it's uh, TMI, this organization that's, that's uh, uh, I had it. I'm trying to find that. I just got an email from her. The peer support is through the First Choice uh, West Virginia. Okay. Um, that's where that one's going to be coming from. And th these, in a sense, we have an actual social worker referral form that our officers use. 
So what they do is they send off these referrals to the social workers and they're from a completely, they have an office space or a desk at our department, but they're from an outside source. So they are specifically for our police department, mm -hmm. which is 100% focused on, uh, for our, A, 100% focused for our police department, which is, which is key. Um, we don't train them. We don't instruct them. They are completely through uh, TMI um, yeah. and First Choice. Chief Aaron Gibbons is our guest here on the program from the City of Martinsburg Police Department. Are you watching any bills in the state legislature while they're uh, right now doing the 60-day session? Uh, there's, well, I mean, going through it 30-some days in, that's 47 pages, 50 each page. That's a little hard to keep up with. But Indeed. there are some very interesting, um, you know, uh, they, they're talking about putting marijuana back on the uh, ballot. Uh, I did see that one. You know, whether they put marijuana on the ballot or not, that doesn't really concern me too much. Um, what I do have an issue with as far as that bills, the language in that bill as of right now is the expungements and the, and the um, dismissals of those marijuana charges previously. Comparatively speaking, if it was a, uh, a DUI 10 years ago or three years, let's say three years ago, you get a DUI and they lower the drinking age to 18. Well, at that time, it was still illegal. Why would you go back and dismiss that? It's, it's the same principle. And I just don't agree with expunging something off somebody's record from, that was illegal at the time, that they knew was illegal at the time. Um, there's, I have a whole list of bills on my, on my phone right now. But that one right now, that one, um, other than uh, I'm trying to think of a couple others I'd have to. There's a couple of death penalty bills that are being proposed as well. Uh, Senator Blair for fentanyl and. Yes, I did see that one as well. Um, that would be the, dis the distribution of fentanyl. Yes, I, I, I'd be curious to see how that bill goes through. And then Senator Stewart is proposing one for uh, protection of uh, emergency personnel, EMTs, firefighters, and such first responders. Anybody who takes the life of a first responder would effectively be subject to the death penalty as well. And there's a couple, you know, for um, rights and, and protections of your home and your curtilage of your home and stuff like that. So yeah, private it's property. going to be a very inter interesting next few weeks. Does, does any of that uh, affect how you do your work? Not necessarily. Um, even if even if they were to put marijuana on the ballot or, um, you know, change uh, uh, the totality of criminal conviction for a certain we adjust, mm -hmm. we adjust no matter what it what it takes, we adjust um, accordingly. Uh, we talked about this before we went on the air for a moment. Uh, are we still writing paper tickets? Uh, is that going to move uh, to the electronic? Uh... Man, I, I would love to go well, electronic tickets. Um, right now it is budget season. We're in budget week. Uh, they're due up this Friday. I don't think I'm actually working on proposals to have our um, e-tickets. I don't think it'll be completed by this Friday. Um, however, I would love to go to electronic ticketing, um, but it is pretty pricey too. So mm -hmm. you have to, uh, you know, you have to keep your guys equipped. You have to keep them trained. You have to pay for that training, pay for that equipping. So it's just prioritizing when our contracts, our service contracts for our current computer systems go out, which is 2025. So it may be something to where budget season for February of 24 or 25 is when I start launching that um, electronic ticketing. But um, I'd like to get at least get four or five in vehicles now um, that we can kind of test out for the next year, because I'm sure there's a lot to figure out. Well, I think uh, I think that would be a great thing because I know there are some officers who I'm sure suffer from what I do, which is unreadable handwriting. And that would, I mean, sometimes judges and everybody else, I mean, it would make it a lot easier. I, I think it might. I think it may. You know, even me going through some of these tickets, if somebody calls in a complaint and I look at a ticket, I, I, it's, it's, well, it's hieroglyph hieroglyphic. Yes. I have no clue what that is. I have no clue what that is. What are some of the main things that uh, you need budget-wise this year, Chief? Well, pay is always an issue. We've, we've always struggled with pay, um, especially of late. You know, there's so many... Now, of course, we are a municipality, and we are, comparatively speaking, to agencies just outside the county, which are in other states. So you're competing with people like Winchester. Um, I did lose somebody to Washington County here a couple months ago, and you just can't. It's very difficult to compete with that. How much is the difference? 
mm, it's a it's a few thousand. It depends on where you go. Whether you're going Hagerstown, Winchester, Frederick County, Washington County, it depends on where you go. But it's substantial enough to make the jump. Yeah, and now uh, actually, I saw one of the bills that were being proposed was state police going up again. So that's another hurdle that we'll have to we'll have to contend with. So when the state police salaries go up, we have to stay competitive. You have to. Yeah, and you're drawing from a and their tax lower, and another another bill was lowering their age to 18. Right now it's 21. They're going to lower it to 18. So would that apply to the city as well if that no, happens? No, we no we uh, um, we're we're at 18 now. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chief Aaron Gibbons is our guest here on the program. Go ahead, Matt. Where are you with your force at this moment in time as to how many officers <clears throat> you have compared to how many you would say we are at 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 full capacity? We are slotted for 50 officers mm -hmm. right now. Um, as of October, November, we were at down to about 34, 35. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge, that's well over 20% of mm -hmm. our force, 25, almost 30% of our force. Um, since then, we really did a recruiting push. And again, that's, that's a lot of changing the focus of your department as well. The stigma of your department, the, the face or the backbone of your department, it's what the community sees as your department. I think that was huge in trying to play a part in this and changing that, that mind frame of these guys that are going out and actually recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, once, once you kind of tackle that and try to address that, the recruiting efforts are, go a hundredfold. So since October, we've... Um, We've either hired and or we have final start dates for eight. Um, now we are losing some to attrition, retirement, things like that. Um, however, I believe that here April, hopefully hopefully by the beginning of April, we'll be at about 40, 41. And I'd like to be full staff by mid to late summer. So out of this weekend, with those that would apply and, and look to become a part of the force, how many would you hope to get out of a weekend like is coming up? And, and how long then is that process from their application this weekend to when they might actually be able to put yeah, on that, a uniform? That po process, it goes from the testing, it goes to the background phase, it goes psychological, polygraph, medical. Once they get into the medical phase, they can, um, and the interview process, mm -hmm. once they get into that, um, medical phase, we can get send them a final offer, make sure we get the interviews done. Um, out of about 31, we're hoping, I hope to at least put 12, 13 backgrounds out. I usually about half, half, half all the way down. So, Chief, you have an exam coming up on the 10th. We have a testing coming up on the 10th. Uh, make sure the applications you can, app you can apply on our website. Uh, we've posted everywhere all, all over uh, City of Martinsburg website. Um, You'll even see our guys walking around with the little QR codes that we've created, so you can just snap it on your phone and apply. I uh, I want to get back to the 18 year olds. What the we talked a little bit about pensions. What is the uh, what is the age years of service that someone can retire with their full pension from Martinsburg Police? 20 years. At 20 years, you can retire at full. Okay. Now, so, I already know what you're thinking. An 18-year-old. So you hire they, an 18-year-old at 38. They can retire. <clears throat> they can start double dipping. And for those of you who don't know what double dipping is, it is municipal workers are underpaid. Police officers are underpaid. One of the benefits that they have is 20 years is great. 20 years, you can get your full pension where you're getting paid, and you have tons of experience. You can go out in the private sector or to another department in another state and make a whole nother income. It's to, beautiful. I'm trying to get them in here. I'm not trying to talk them about leaving at 20 <laughs> Well, no, but I, now, I mean, now there is, at now the there end is an is advantage. Beautiful. Just for example, my two, I, I'll have two years left as of tomorrow, the next day. He's signaling that again. The, uh, I have two years left. Thank you, Chief. Until I can <laughs> completely retire. Every year that you do afterwards, you get an additional 2%. So you retire at 60%, you can retire at 50. Yes, you can double dip, but there is an advantage right now if you get hired now, there is an adva advantage for staying years over your 20 nice. years. So every year that you do over your 20, you can uh, you get an additional 2% up to 70%. It's beautiful. And then it's 1% every year after that. Great pension, great benefits right now. And of course, you know, hiring somebody at 18, now there's no ceiling cap. <laughs> You can actually retire three times. 
Oh, that's beautiful. That is, but I mean, looking at that as, a, as an 18 to 20-year-old. I've, I've been year old, fired three times. Does that count the yeah, same way? No. I mean, it's similar. It's similar. As an 18 to 20-year-old, I mean, 20 years, you know, you're 40. Mm-hmm. You're 40 years old. And then you can keep adding 2% on it. Yeah, it's the same with the military. It's, yeah. It's, at it's 39, a, you can retire. It sounds good. But is the challenge finding <clears throat> the mature 18-year-old who's ready to jump into this line of work? It is, and it, and it is just like the military. You have to make sure they're mm-hmm. readily equipped and readily right. trained. So making sure that they are spot on before you put them out there on their own, mm-hmm. is, that's, that's key. And there's a lot of people that come in that, that young, and you have to keep a hold of them a little bit longer and keep them on the FTO program for a little bit longer. What's the FTO program, Coach? Uh, <laughs> coach, Chief. <laughs> coach? <laughs> that, coach. Um, the FTO, uh, it's a field training officer. So mm-hmm. when you first get hired onto a police department, we have a field training program. Um, it usually lasts about three, four months, and that's outside of the police academy. So you can be between the police academy and the FTO program. You're looking at eight months going through training eight nine months wow. going through training when do you send them to the academy as soon as i can get a spot uh, right now we have four in fairmont i have four in the fairmont class and i have two going to the west virginia state police academy here on the 20th and how long is academy training 16 weeks do they live they live there move yes. there mm-hmm. right now, well they come home on weekends okay now you have a uh, a sign-on bonus program too we do right now for in-state certified now i only put this out for six months so this is only lasts till March 15th or so. It's on our site. Um, it's 25000 for in-state certified. So if you're certified in-state West Virginia, it's 25000 sign-on bonus. If it's out-of-state certified, it's fifteen, And then uh, we're just doing a, re- a recruiting incentive, like 3000 for for um, just getting hired on. That might just be a referral. Don't quote me on that one. Mm-hmm. And, and when does that bonus paid out? You have to be on the force for so many months before you get there? Uh, it upon once you um, swear in to the mm-hmm. department, that's when it's paid out. But we do have an agreement that you need to stay for so long. So, mm-hmm. which is, you know, you have to get your bang for your buck, I guess. You oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you don't want people, you know, taking a bonus from you. And then, <laughs> you know, a year later, another department says, we're giving you 25 to move, you know. Yeah, well, that's another. End up with Le- the LeBron James of uh, police <laughs> yeah, officers. Yeah. He'll be bouncing all over the place now. <laughs> I'm um, flopping. That's, a, that's actually another bill that's in, in the House. Uh, I think it was in the House right now, was that um, if you are an officer and you come in to a department and you leave, you have to pay that department you leave to has to pay back the originating officers the academy costs and things like that that's on the house i don't know if that's going to go through or not but there's been some debate about when to send new officers to the academy because uh there was a complaint a few years back that if you send them to the academy right away they get trained and then in a year you lose them to another place that can pay them more money so some people were thinking that delaying the sending to the academy might be the better thought process what do you think about that well I, I don't as long as they're trained when they come back i don't we really haven't had that many leave um of course we did have somebody go to washington county that had only been here for a year mm-hmm. it's really not much you can do about that that's where the kids from um, i'm not gonna everybody has you know i wish them the best you know i still you know push people our way if you would but whether it's you know sending them directly away i do i do like the fact that when they get to the academy they do have some road experience mm-hmm. so if you can have somebody in the department and you start pushing community orientation towards these officers prior to them going to the account the academy they already have that focus um and being at the academy with some road experience kind of mm-hmm. sets the tone for your academy experience itself so we are just about out of time. Go ahead, Matt. I was just going to say, you mentioned the road experience. Do you still have the bike officers in the especially summer months? We do. We still have bike officers. Actually, um, I was out in July and August riding around on the bike as well. Right. So I was. I used to be bi- part of the bike patrol, mm-hmm. and I like getting out there and riding downtown on the yeah. bike. So just that, getting out and talking to people. That is how I met Glenn Mocker, by the way. You didn't meet him. He met you. That's how it worked. You don't have to. You, you, yeah. it, was, it was the 90s. I was over at the Sheets. <laughs> filling up the old Jetta and uh, Glenn came through on the bike, hit a patch of gasoline and just down, just, I mean, down and uh, bounced back up and, uh, and rode away. And I went on the air and I said, I almost got hit by a Martinsburg uh, city of Martinsburg bicycle officer. I said, the dude 
came flying through, hit a patch of gasoline, and down he went. And I yelled, hey, watch out for the car. Now, that was the punchline. I was, I was making that up. I finished my shift, and guess who's you standing at the front there. door? <laughs> <laughs> Mocker standing at the front door and waiting for me. Oh, no. Well, I've, I've had a few spills on bikes myself. I bet that was an interesting conversation. It was fun. Uh, was Chief. that a written citation or an electronic? Because <laughs> yeah. I know he probably gave you one. He found something. He actually did one. not. But he, he ended up, we, we had a good laugh. He actually grew up in the community right next to mine. He was older. I didn't know him until I, I moved here. But uh, he actually grew up in the, uh, the exact neighboring community. Uh, Chief, the exam is uh, Saturday the 10th. Uh, take a minute and go ahead and, and sell the exam and the recruitment process. What do you need to? What do people need to hear? So you can apply on the website. Great pension, great benefits. We're starting off at 56 once you're out of the academy. Um, and uh, testing is this weekend, Saturday the 10th at 9 a.m. So make sure you get your applications in prior to. Good to see you, sir. Thank you guys very much. Thanks so much for coming in. Chief Aaron Gibbons from the City of Martinsburg Police Department.